In part one of this exercise, we uh, did the planning for the program and we ended with a flow diagram of the steps that we have to now translate into a C sharp program. So we start a new Windows Forms program. I call it Lecture 3 Exercise 1. And I'm going to browse to the Lecture 3 folder. Say OK. Now we've already done the planning in part one of this exercise. I'm going to rename the form to form car rental and just change the text to car rental as well. So we've seen in our planning that we need three input values, one, one for the number of days and two for the kilometer readings. So I'm going to add two text boxes for the two kilometer readings. And then I'm going to use a numeric up down for the number of days. And as always, we need some labels to give the user instructions on what to provide us with. So label one's text I'm going to change to Enter beginning kilometer reading. Level two. Enter in kilometer reading. And level three. Then okay, I have to rename the text boxes. So the first one will be TXT start kilometers. The next second one will be TXT end kilometers. And then we will have numeric up down NUD days. So then we also need a button for our processing. So and I'm gonna call the button BTM calculate that and change its text to calculate amount due. So that is the form. One additional thing that I want to show you is the tab index property. When we run the program now, let's just see what happens. You can see the cursor is flashing in the first text box there. That is good because that is the first input value we want from the user. So now the user can type a number and then to go to the next input field we can press the tab key on the keyboard. So there you can see it jumps to the second input input box and we can enter another value. And then if I press the tab key again it jumps to the number of days. So by default the tab set or the tab indexes of these input fields were correct so that the user can logically enter the values from top to bottom. But sometimes the order in which we place the controls on the form is not exactly in the way that um, in the same order as we will be using them. And then um, 
the cursor might not appear in the right place when the form uh, opens up. So to set that, uh, we click on the input field and we find the tab index property. So and there you can see this one is set to zero, the next one is set to one, and the number of days um, numeric up down is set to two. The button should, we can set the button to three so that if the user presses the tab key after entering the three input values, the button will become the active control. We are now ready to write the event handler for this program and we are going to write the click event handler for the calculate amount due button. So I double click on that and it opens up the click event. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to add some comments that will sort of be in line with the steps that we had in our flow diagram. So first we are going to declare variables, then we are going to um, get the input and convert to integer. The next step in our flow diagram was to calculate the total kilometers. And then we calculated in one statement the total amount due. Um, due. And finally, we convert the amount to string and display it in a message box. Okay. These comments now tells the story of our program and we can now go full in the code according to what we have here in the comments. So in order to declare the variables we have an integer start kilometers, we have another one end kilometers and we also have the days as an integer. We are going to calculate the total number of kilometers because the start and end kilometers are both integer. We are going to declare the total kilometers as an integer as well. And we can also um, just calculate the total amount as an integer too. Or you can um, declare it as a double. You must just make sure that whatever you declare it as later on when you convert the numbers that you use to write type. Okay, so our next step is to get the input from the input boxes and convert them to an integer and assign them to the variables. So the start kilometers is equal to. Now that we will get from the text box called start kilometers dot text. But obviously this is a text value or a string value and we want to assign it to an integer. So I'm going to put that in brackets and then I'm just going to add the convert statement here. Right. And then the same for the end kilometers. I'm going to say convert to int 32 text in Text semicolon there. The last input field was the days, and that is a numeric up down dot value, and it complains about the type, and that is because value is a decimal type, and days we declared as an integer. So I'm going to convert this to integer as well. I'm just going to copy and paste it from there. I don't have to type it all out. Okay, so now we have all our input values in variables and we can now calculate the total kilometers. So say total kilometers. 
kilometers is equal to the end kilometers minus the start kilometers. Then we want to cal cal calculate the total amount due. So the total amount is equal to, so now we can remember the, the um, client has to pay five runs per kilometer. So that for the reason we say total kilometers multiplied by five. So the second part of the total amount consists of the number of days times 300 rands, which is the daily tariff. So we're going to add that part to the total kilometers times five. So we're going to say days times 300. Okay. So this part is the number of days times the 300 rands tariff per day. This is the total number of kilometers driven times the five rands per kilometer. Okay, so we've calculated the amount. Now we can display it. I'm going to display it in a message box by saying in a string the amount due is, and then I'm just going to put the R for the rand value. Okay, and the second part will now be the total amount. Okay. Oops. So this is now an integer value that we are adding to a string. So one would expect that it would give us an error message here saying that we should convert it to a string first. But this is sort of an inconsistency in, in c -sharp. Sometimes c -sharp does this conversion implicitly. So it actually picks up that we're trying to add the integer to a string value and it does the conversion itself before adding it. So this that, that implicit um, conversion to integer can be made explicit as well as well with a convert to string total amount we just have to add the second bracket there so this is the whole program and we can now run it say that beginning kilometer reading was 100, the end kilometer reading was 200, and the person stayed for two days. Then we can calculate the amount due like that. Okay, so it says the person owes 1,100 rands. So there was a 100 kilometer difference between the two odometer readings, so that would be then 100 times 5 which is 500, plus 2 times 300, which is 600. So we have 500 rands for the kilometers and 600 rands for the number of days, and the sum of that is 1,100.